hi guys <laughs> hi we're back to the shit i'm 30 almost didn't make it podcast <laughs> with your host carla who last night was a 21 year old white girl today she's 30 plus and hurting and i'm in new york and i can't stop burping and i'm in a studio like professional type shit there's like a man in the in the, in the, in the room i'm burping i want to fart <laughs> i love this and i'm with an amazing person today Oh. Mandy. Yes. I'm in bitch, I'm in New York with you. This is crazy. Like, Mind you, had a live show last night. Then she took me out to party on in the New York nightlife. And now we're in the studio recording. And the we're in the day. studio. And then I didn't realize you said we had to be here at one. But to me, I'm I'm a, I'm a Florida girl. So it's like you get in the car, you go where you're going. No. I keep forgetting the commute to get yes. wherever it is. From the Bronx, while. bitch. Yes. Oh, and by the way. <laughs> I'm staying in the Bronx. <laughs> Bitch, I'm hood as fuck. Hey, 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 chill out. I live in the good part of the Bronx. Calm down. People don't know about Orlando. I or mean, anywhere else. You say the Bronx and you hood. BX. I'm a thug. <laughs> what you said, you did like this yesterday. Now I know what that means. <laughs> I'm popping, okay? <laughs> Wait. Well, I'm glad that you wanted to, to do this and bring me on the Shit I'm 30 podcast. Although, Shit, I'm I am 30. I am almost 30. So this is kind of a Shit, I'm almost 30. Like, I am. I, I'll be 28 this year. So. Oh, honey, you're knocking. I'm, I'm getting there. After last night, I feel like my body is over 30 with them. There's one I, thing you said, I can't drink and wake up the next day. And that's when you know you're reaching. 30. Well, that's when. That's because, guys, she had me on brown liquor. I don't know if you guys know. Excuses. I have, I have now transferred back to white. And I am a Tito's advocate. Tito's and soda with Plenty lime, please. Plenty of niggas drink Tito's. Right. But now last night. You um, had me on brown, which is why I feel like this today. <laughs> because you can't drink Tito straight. You could drink it with soda, with a lime. Where were we supposed to get soda where we were at the show? Oh. There was no soda, there was no ice. We needed to find whatever you we could right, drink straight. So let's just do shots. So the crown apple was perfect. <laughs> it was so good. Well, I wanted, to act I wanted to bring you and have you on the show because I have seen such a change in you. And, well, it's a, and it's a good thing, but it's a change of, it's going to happen, I think, almost to everyone. And I'll say almost because there's some people that don't grow up. Right. And we know, we all, everybody knows that one person, that one girl, that one guy who is hitting 40 and they still act like they're 21. Mm -hmm. um, and that has nothing to do with, with the fact they have kids or if they're married, they can have kids and married and still act like they're young as well. Absolutely. And not, and not grow up. So it's, I think we're talking about growth mentally. Not like your ass grew or anything like that. Mine still has My ass has definitely shrank I'm since waiting for we the day first mine met. Grows. <laughs> Maybe that it comes with growth, but it doesn't. <laughs> uh, let's let everybody know basically what you do now. Oh. Like, okay. Well, I have two lives, so I guess I can mention that. So I just, I, I'll do the nice side of my life first. Actually, okay. no, I'll introduce it. So I'm a one half of the very popular. Um, high in demand. Popular as <laughs> you <fuck>. know, <laughs> um, podcast horrible decisions. Um, and we talk about um sexual liberation, um, women empowerment, and just pretty much start the conversations around things um sexually that we don't do within our community. And I say right. our community, minority communities, um, Latinas, black, brown, black right. brown, um, I don't know about Asians. I would say Asians. There's Asians some are Asian. the majority. They take up over half the globe. Right? Over half the globe? About? De Asians are Bitch, the majority. We're over there. We're I think. About, they're the oh. Here. We're are they the minority? Anyways. They're a minority. Here. Anyways, we talk about sex. But it's mostly black and brown. Is, aren't Asians brown? No, they're yellow. No? Are they, no? Is that bad? No, I don't know. Listen. I don't know. Disclaimer. No. We might say certain things that might offend some people. I'm sorry. We're not trying to offend anyone. I never mean to offend anyone, but that's that's what I thought. No. Okay. Don't mind me. Anyways, and then on the other side of things, I just, we were laughing. No. Stop. My bad. Well, I didn't know. I So real quick, because I do want to let you guys know a little bit. Um about me. I don't try to be offensive and I'm trying to work to where I, I also don't give a fuck to be politically correct on things. So right. even last night but in the show, does, like if someone does tell us, Hey, it's this way, not this right. way. And I'll we'll, be like, we'll okay, yeah, we will change it. Me and act, I, I do real quick want to share a story. Me and Carla had probably a half a day conversation on what's appropriate to call a transgender person. Person, Me, person, girl, woman, people, transition, <laughs> not trans. <laughs> <laughs> like we didn't know what to say. Mind you, um, I had sent a flyer to her 
Um, and it was called but, Tranny Thursday. But it was because you had just had a show, and we talked about it after that. They told you, don't call us Tranny. Right. Was it you that had the show? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I was talking with when I did well, one, one yeah, of my episodes. Yeah, and we had talked about it, and I was just like, but wait. In their own community, they're using the word tranny. So we literally spent half a day talking about this. So if I offend you guys, I don't mean to. These, again, are conversations that need to be had. Right. Um, if you want to check me, you can find me on social media and, and, and correct that. You know. Um, and then so on the other side of what I do is so I just graduated with my BS in accounting and a BBA in marketing. Ooh, and I currently, marketing. you know, I currently work in finance and accounting. So. Yes. It's like night and day talking about sex and then looking at fucking Excel spreadsheets all day. But all fucking day. All day. But I get through it. Um, and, you know, so, yeah, that's a, a little bit of what I do currently. Yes. To me, when you said you were going into accounting, which is I was already within the field when you were going. I'm, I'm like, sure. <laughs> The only reason I'm doing this is to pay bills and take care of my child who I apparently have to feed. Well, that's the thing. So when me and Carla met. And I, I'm sorry if I'm jumping around, but no, we were both in the nightlife. So I I, I bartended for seven years, and was Carlo like, was the bottle was server, it. the hottest one in Orlando, oh, you know. Been, oh, <laughs> but no, and so living that life, being on the night scene, making cash, um, being in that type of environment, I just knew when I got to my 30s, and this is actually funny that – it, you know, it fits with the show. Right. I said, when I get to my 30s, there's no way I'm still going to be in the club. When I get to my 30s, I don't, if I have a family, I don't want to be doing this. I want stability right. financially and um, security in a job. And yes, bartending, waitressing is a job, money, money, but money. I wanted a career. I was like, I graduated top of my class. I, I, I wanted to go back to school and get my degrees. And I was just like, I need the security. When I get older, of course, now I'm in this creative space where I know that there's money and right. there's a potential to grow there. But to me, that's still you're, you're building security it, for yourself at the end it, of the day. Yes. And so even though you don't like accounting, even though accounting is not a passion for me, you can't be an entrepreneur and do all of these other things without having a stream of income. I did it because I wanted to understand. I'm good with numbers. Me too. I, I've it ain't as much numbers as I thought, though. Um, you're in a di I think you're, you're in a different field when it comes to accounting. Yes. So I'm a full cycle accounting, month end, quarter end, year end, like all that stuff. I think you're and more I do, like advising. Well, no. Not so yet. I actually do financial services, but I do tax. Tax as uh, it relates to investments. Tax as it relates to corporations, um, real estate investments, yeah, private I'm equity, sure. employee funds. That stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't touch that one. The only okay. thing I touch is sales and use and like. Anyways, that's boring. Yeah, yeah that, I kind of is boring shit. Right, but where we but, don't belong. Right, but when when you do get to a certain age, and so I was bartending eighteen to probably 25, 26, 25. So within those seven years, you you do a lot. A lot. And bitch, I was working maybe two three times a week making hella money, and then I had all the free time to be a hoe. So <laughs> You still have plenty of free time. Don't be No, angry. right now I feel like that free time isn't there. Like, I, I don't have the free time even to give my energy to the men that I entertained at one point and all that. So. Yeah. Well, let's do – Um. so you cut, You touched on that. I want to see how we met. I don't remember the day we met, honestly. Me neither. I don't know when it happened or how it happened. Or because where it I knew was. you before summer league. When I brought when yes. I brought that table, I knew you. I don't know when we met either, so but we just always knew each other, right? <laughs> I, so I remember it was. I believe I don't know what the date was when you brought you came in went to the club with yes. a bunch of basketball players, and I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. I'm a bottle girl. They're gonna spend the money. Let's go. Let's run it. Right. So you introduced me to this guy, and I think I was dating someone at the time. I, yeah, I was. I was dating okay. somebody at the time. And I just, I, I didn't really want to date any athletes. I don't like dating athletes. And I was like, you girl. love athletes. They're around all the time. And I'm perfectly fine with taking their money in the club. Right. But dating you, no. I, I want to cuddle and shit. And you're going to cuddle with me and other <laughs> bitches the next day. So, no. That's not going to happen. So, she introduces me to this guy. And everything was fine. I didn't want to date him. So, we stayed friends for a, long, for a while. Then, a year and a half later, I decide I'm going to give him a shot. Yes. So... I give this man a shot, and now we're dating, and everything is cool. I'm texting Mandy. I'm like, yeah, we're together. He's he's cool. We're having a good time. All of a sudden, I'm at Olive Garden one day, and my phone. Do I know this story? 
I don't know. Oh, wait. My phone <laughs> oh, starts going that's right. crazy. I- <laughs> so I had notifications because, you know, my phone's kind of dry as fuck. I'm not popping. I don't got nobody on my phone. My daughter might text me, my mom and my dad. And this I can't. This is when we were like, we were associates. We knew of each other. But yes, 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 so, yes, yes. <laughs> I um, love this story. I'm at my phone. The twi- my Twitter's going off. And I'm like, nah, I know. Nobody's hit me up on Twitter like that. I can't unlock my phone because the notifications aren't coming. So my phone dies. I leave Olive Garden to go put it in the charger, and when I finally get into my phone, I'm getting notifications. This bitch has AIDS. Um, she's not even that cute. Who the fuck is she? And I'm like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, <laughs> what so happened? I take blame to that. So during my time as a bartender, I was in the media space. I had a sports blog, Full Court Pumps. Bitch. And so uh, amongst gossip and rumors and, uh, you know, everything sports, I posted that Carla was dating so-and-so NBA player. And then she proceeds to add Bottle Girl from Orlando with pictures from my Instagram. Because she was fine. Bitch, they was good pictures. They were fine. They was good Nobody pictures. Nobody needed to know I was dating the guy. You had it on Instagram. I have a thousand followers, so, bitch. So this is the thing, too. This is the thing. And, and, and I want to actually share this, too, when it comes to, to blogging and even with my friends. So... It was content. Had it, well, not only was it content <laughs> and bait worth, and I got paid from Google back then, so, ma'am, I needed those clicks. But um, it was also something to me when you put something into the universe. So, say I'm dating someone and I post it to my so social media. So now it's media. my fault. Absolutely. So, <laughs> I was aware through through this guy, I was aware that you guys were seeing each other because me and him were, were right. friends at the time. And I was okay with that. Like, cool. I knew it, but I didn't go and put you guys together without you guys being together and making it public. So when you make something public, regardless of the amount of followers you have. He wasn't to, even a star player. I mean, he was still in the NBA. People, I, people still care. And then I think the, the other issue is. I posted it because I didn't think it was going to be that big. And then other blogs picked it up. No, here's what happened. At the time, Rihanna was messing with J.R. Smith. Or they were linked at oh, some point. Oh, it was around that time. So they, put a, they found them together. There were some pictures. Oh, they did a, a whole thing a about blog. NBA players and their... No. No? no, bitch. It was just a blog about t- who were spotted together. And it was Rihanna and J.R. Smith. And then some little old girl from Orlando and this other guy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Bro, NBA players, NBA players. There's literally so only... It's like NBA, NBA, Rihanna, and Carla. Who the fuck is Carla? So here come just random ass <laughs> trolls telling me I have AIDS, that I'm transgender, that I have all these STDs, um, that I... It was crazy. I don't think... Okay, so that's another thing. I feel like since... Because I've been in social media, the social media realm for so long, I feel like I've become numb to the trolling and what goes on. And yeah, so I don't think a lot of people realize when they go onto the internet and when we see even the celebrities clapping back at people and they're like, oh my God, you should ignore it. Like, we're human beings. After a while, it gets to you. It gets to you. You're seeing a million comments. It gets to you. And that's why it's like you don't, I'm ignoring so much before we even get to where I'm clapping back. It's just like, bro, you can only take so much as a human being. And all of us ready. are human beings. It's a lot. Like, I- Rihanna knows that she's going to, like, you as an artist, as a professional athlete, they yes. know they're getting it. I wasn't expecting it. So that just that threw me off. So I was really upset with you. Because I, <laughs> but we oh, made up after that, because clearly. Because also... It was All Star Weekend. I gained some followers on Instagram, so I thought I was like kind of popping because I think I had like twenty five hundred followers. No, no, I'm, I think I was at like almost ten thousand. It was all because of All Stars, and I I was working it. Ah, yes. So I gained all these followers. Now these hoes, and I'm gonna call y'all hoes in a derogatory word. Not because y'all <laughs> second day, but just because I feel like it's a word to say fuck you. And um, they deleted my Instagram, and at the time you can't get your Instagram back. <laughs> so now I'm just basic as fuck. And I don't want to buy followers, so I'm just... No, 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 no. That's that's never cool. I was popping. I was Instagram famous. You were. Well, now it's gone. You getting back there because, shit, I'm 30. You know, we, it's kind of lit. Ah, it's kind of lit. And I'm in New York, bitch. <laughs> I, I made it. I can quit my job tomorrow. You know what? You know, people better be but, careful you now. Know, you know, <laughs> right. Okay, so growth-wise, why I wanted to bring you on. Let's go back to who you, who you were, kind of what you did in your early... Late teens, early twenties, 
So a few things that you would say now, I'm, you're not in that headspace anymore and you've changed it. Okay, so I guess first I'll say. Tell me why I'll tell you one of myself. Okay. I would say one thing for sure that I've noticed in the change in me going from my early or well, my late teens and early 20s to where I am now at almost 30. Um, I would say the energy that I give to men. Um, I was very fluid with casual sex and fucking just to fuck. And now I'm in a space where I don't need to entertain that many individuals. Um, but you still fuck just to fuck. I still have those relationships with with certain people. One part, like I've been fucking one person for the last eight months. Just added Felon Bay, of course. Like just added a, a I second. Met, oh, I met Felon Bay, y'all. <laughs> she I had, met him. I, I was on, can I say this? I what? was on parole duties. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so she said he needs to sit next to you. Make sure you go get Felon Bay. And I'm sitting here like, am I his parole officer? Yeah, you know, Do you're not his parole sure officer. Shut up. With this live show. No, but like, so so that's the thing. Like back. When I was younger, I felt like I would just have guys come over just because I was bored or because, yeah, maybe this is, I don't know if I was craving attention back then. I don't know. It, 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 and it could have been. Um, but at, at the age that I am now to just notice, knowing my body more, um, loving yourself, more. loving myself a lot more and um, having the value in myself without having to gain that value from someone else. Right. So it's me just now respecting myself, respecting my time. Mm -hmm. I was giving so many people my time that I shouldn't have, um, making people priorities that I shouldn't have. And I feel like we've all been there. And, like, so being where I am in the space where I do have my own business with the podcast, I was just in school for the last four years and completed two bachelors in four years and working at, you know, the investment bank that I've been at for the, the last year and a half, it's literally just been like, okay, I'm focusing on me. And when I do get free time, I'm going to be very picky with who I share that time and with. And that's one of the biggest changes I've seen in you. Because back in 2011, 2012, you Ugh. couldn't give three fucks about working a nine to five. Ever. I it's was like, like bitch, I'm what? Young, I'm a hot little thing. I'm just going <laughs> to suck and fuck and have a good time get and Get flown travel. out. Yep. Try, I, yep. All that stuff. For me, I, I, I didn't have the um, the freedom to do any of that because I had my daughter super young. But I think where I, my downfall, and I'll say downfall, it was my temper. Ah. So with me, I can fight you. Right. I My daddy will bail me out. Bail me out. That was my train of thought. It doesn't matter. I'll fix it later. I'll do whatever I want. My my temper was bad. Um, My anger was bad. And I was giving, the same way you were giving energy to maybe men or whatever, I was giving energy to people with with anger, with cussing them out, with being mm. upset and stuff like that. So as I grew, I realized and I started asking myself, is this going, it's a question I ask myself all the time. Is this going to matter in five minutes? Is it going to matter in five days? Is it going to matter in five weeks? Is it going to matter in five I years? I like that train thought. I like that train so thought. So when I make any decisions, I like now that. I think to myself, is it going to affect me later on? So even when I talk to you now, I, I, I see myself and I tell you this, I think every day. You do. When you react certain ways, I want to tell you, before you speak, tell yourself, is this going to affect me five minutes from now, five days from now, five years from now? So I, was, I won't say what happened, but yesterday you did, it was a, a bit of an outburst. And if you would have thought before you said the outburst, whatever I'm out saying right now or having an attitude about, is it really going to matter in five minutes, literally? It right. wasn't going to matter. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Right. It, will, that. will it have a lasting effect? Probably. Okay. So the, I I changed that, and now I'm like, look, if I if I put hands on somebody now, I can go to jail. Which would affect your which daughter. Which affect your my job, daughter. Yeah. This new job, which will affect the fact that I, I I'm too cute to go to jail. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. You definitely get fucked in jail, bro. My daddy bro. passed away. Who's going to bail me out? My mama going to leave my ass in there. That's really what it is. My sister's That's an really, attorney, you and ain't I feel got, like you she ain't won't got, leave you, me in there for real. You ain't got that safety net of getting bailed out. I don't have a safety net, and I feel like you have that when you're younger. So now it's like I need some big smarter decisions yeah. with my time and not give so much of my time and my anger to people when it's not going to affect me in five days. I like I, – it's crazy that you said that because we also um, had a conversation how – when you're younger, you just think that it's okay, I have time. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, or it's okay, I'm young, so it doesn't matter. And when you get older, 
and you look back and you're and, and you look and it's like damn those decisions i did make younger are affecting me now like sometimes i think about wow if i thought to myself when i was 18 you know what that so my lap from 29 to 30 i took a big change i stopped working completely and i went to school so I wasn't making any money, really. Mm-hmm. I was broke. Mm-hmm. I can definitely say I was broke. I'm not broke to the point where I won't have what I need because my I'm fortunate enough to have my family. But I'm broke where I've always known my own money and my own paycheck. Right. If I would have made that sacrifice of that when I was 21, I would be chilling right now. Right. I would have been having my salary that I have now at 25. Right. But I also would not change it ever. So this is another question I wanted to touch. It's like, is there something from your past that you would change from back then to change the outcome of where you are today? Mm. So it's crazy because I used to regret. So I had a full ride to the University of Florida. Me too. Didn't take it because I wanted to be fast and moved up to Atlanta. And so I, for a very long time, I regretted it because I ended up moving to Atlanta, got accepted to Georgia State University. Only got the minimum of, of Pell and Federal. And because I was out of state, they were like, just so you know, let us know how you're coming up with that other $20,000 for tuition. And at this point, I'm literally in my very first apartment. I'm 18 years old. I don't even have a bed in my apartment yet. Like, I'm literally sleeping on an air mattress. Like, I'm, oh I'm 18. God. I moved up. To, I packed my car and moved to Atlanta. It doesn't so, even matter 18. You're like, who cares? So I used to regret not going to school immediately out of high school. However, I will say, now there's nothing that I regret. Leaving out of high school, I wanted a fucking degree in psychology. Jesus Christ, I would have been broke for life (laughs) with a wasted degree. So, and this... Yes, this is shade to anyone listening with a psychology degree. If you're not going to to, to be a doctor, it's a it's a very minimalistic. You like be a teacher. you're making thirty five thousand, and that's to me is not living. And so, uh, to you, I'm glad to, you to said, me, I'm, to I'm me that's not living. To, to me, that's not living. I, I hate when people sometimes are like forty thousand is not a lot. To some people, to, they are perfectly fine with that, and that's fine. Mediocrity. That's what I call that, and I'm sorry, I, I do. I don't even have kids and 40000 is not enough for me. At that level with a certain amount of kids, you're also dependent on government assistance. So I'm just, eh. It depends where you live. It does depend where you live. Okay, Let's it depends where you, you live. Rent. It depends where you, you live. You don't have any kids. It depends where you live. You like to shop at Payless. <laughs> you know, all of that. But so back, back to that, I did regret that at one point. Now I will say there is nothing that I would go back and change because everything that I did, all of my de- decisions, my mistakes, things that – I don't agree with now that I did back then. They've all made me who I am today. Um, And going back to school at 24, I knew I wanted a degree that made sense to me. I I wanted a degree that I could come out making 70,000. Like I, and I didn't have that knowledge or those resources when I was in high school to tell me of, uh, of finance and accounting and these other career options that I had. I'm glad you said that because I feel like in our community, black and brown community, we, my mom didn't go to school. My mom didn't didn't graduate high school. My grand, I didn't know anyone. The only one I knew that I had went to school was my sister. And I was just like, I, I didn't want to do what she was doing. Yeah. Because you, you don't want to do what your siblings are doing. My mom and was a nurse. And I was like. Ugh. When we don't have that, gr- that that growing up that way, that family structure, we we do whatever we see. Yep. Or whatever. It's easier. So I hate when some people look at our community and they're like, well, they should know better. For, how? How? We don't grow up knowing about Our school. parents don't. Some yeah. people don't have cell phones. But they not only that. Them. Even our it, parents, if your mom is telling you, you need to help me sell this dope. Hello. You've been to help your parents sell that dope. But even in my high school, so I graduated from Evans High School in Orlando. Which and is a predominantly black school. Predominantly black. Hood. And you know, you, you know what they had? They had a daycare at my high school. And they had okay, really? they had a cosmetology, like a, a group a, a trade. A, for to, to do hair. So when it came to wow. what we would do as far as, even my, even my real, real quick, even my full ride to, to the University of Florida. You know why we got that? Because Evans was a partnership school with the University of Florida so that they so that they can meet their black quota. Yeah. That's why. That's why I was given a ride because I was at a majority minority I'm school. I'm not mad at that though. No, me neither. I'm not mad at that. But when you when when we don't have the guidance of 
other career options. Right. Other, like, I would have wasted four years at the University of Florida for a psychology degree. Right. I feel like, and that's another thing. So they, they do send us to the school with a full ride, but then once you're there, still you're no like, advisory. Who, what do I want to do? Yeah. Um, and at 18, you don't know what you the don't fuck you want to be. You don't. You, you don't. We don't. I feel like at 20, uh, 24, 25, I still wasn't sure. That's when I started working in the club. Yeah. I was 25, 24. Okay. And I didn't drink really. I was nothing. Like at the first six months that I was bartending and waitressing, I wasn't even drinking. Mm-hmm. I was doing it sober as fuck. I was like, really happy about the money. Girl, I was leaving Antigua's with like, no less than a thousand dollars. I know. So crazy. No, I didn't need a drink. I was high as fuck of right. the money that I was making. So we don't know who we are or what we're doing. So I, I wouldn't change anything no, from my life yeah. either. I, I was gonna ask you, and it's crazy too because you said something about changing growth, and where I am now at twenty seven, almost twenty eight, I feel like, oh my god. I know myself. I see myself. And we talked about this. You're like, girl, when you get in your thirties, you're gonna change again. You're going to have a different mindset about something. Like, yes. it's constantly going to change. And I tell you that right now. You do? What you think today, I promise you, in three <laughs> years, you're not going to feel the same way. And I tell you, do not make permanent decisions right. of a temporary emotions. Right. Because you, whatever you hate today, you could love. And you can't say, I, I won't. I'm telling you, I didn't like eggs for a really long time, <laughs> bitch. Said and now I love to eat eggs, okay? I, same with olives. I said, I feel like it's an old person thing. Like, I used to oh, be I like, ew, olives. dirty martinis. Who wants olives? And now I'd be like, can I get a side of olives, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, even out... Um, I think we we're going to talk about this later, but I always said, and I was very anal about, do not touch my ass. <laughs> Don't look at my ass. I shit through my ass. So, any, I wasn't, like, a super sexual person. And, um... I'm not saying this. <laughs> Don't, anyways. We're oh, the subject. yeah. She's like, nope. Uh, we're not talking I, about I, my, my booty <laughs> hole no more. We're not saying it. I did not have <laughs> anal, just in case. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, or anything let's, close to Let's that. clear that up. Let's, let's clear, clear that, that up. up. No. Things change. There are things sexually that I said I would never do. I didn't even want to experience. And now I'm like, maybe. Okay. You know what I mean? And that happens with anything. Like, any relationship, anything. There are a lot of things that I hate. I always said, like, I'm not going to work. I didn't want to work corporate. I'm working corporate. Very corporate. I said amazing. I'm not, I wouldn't work with my parents. I opened the business with my dad. You right. Know? So it was different things like that that after years, it was like, okay, maybe I want to do this now. I was very clear before, no, 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 but I'm allowed to change and we're allowed to grow. And that's another thing we were talking about. So let's take it to more um, – Something that's currently happened. Okay. And Here we, we go. The, we had a conversation. Here we go. Here about we go. it. So, X, 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 Tentacion. I don't know who this kid is. Okay. I never listened to his music. I, I knew of who he was just through listening to the blogs and podcasts that talk about music. That's so, yeah. but I had never listened so to his I music. So, I told it. you I didn't know who Rich Homie Kid Quan. R- Rich Homie Quan. Yeah. You said Rich Homie The Quan. I don't know if it's because the, Ayana told me there's two people: Rich the kid and Rich Homie Quan. Yes. Boom. So, Got it. That I was really thick in there. <laughs> so there's. Two this people. is when you know you're getting old too. When yes. all these new people and start coming out, and you're like, "Who was that? Who was that gentleman there with them dreads with the colors right, on them?" I thought everybody was Young Thug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a song came in. Look, and here I go thinking, "Isn't it Little Thug?" No, it is. No, it's Young, young thug. thug. And a song came on in the club thug. yesterday. And I turned over. And I said to I we were mom and I, I was like, Yeah, I like this song too. It's the Migos. And he gave me the side eye like, bitch. It wasn't Migos? No. <laughs> I don't even know what the song was. <laughs> but I thought it was Migos and I was bumping to it. That I was is like, so yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, this, this offset is, right here. <laughs> bro, and it's so funny because we used to make fun of our parents growing up. Yes. And now we're those people. I am that parent. I'm like, who are these little people? Who are these? What's this new music these new people are listening these, these little no kids are listening to now? Yeah. I literally feel like we're that age. Even at 27, 28, like my generation is even like, what are these it's young so kids different. listening to? It's, yes. it's crazy. So I get corrected by Ayana all the time. And when this kid dies, I was like, oh, wow. And she goes, oh, my God, no, this can't be happening. Who is this? <laughs> you know, what is his name? She's like, yeah, right. he has the song. And she told me the song. And I was like, oh, I know that song. I didn't know who it was, but I knew who the kid is. But regardless of what the music aspect of it. So he dies. Right. He someone, got killed. Someone killed him. Um, and you're, I was listening to your live. I think it was yes. your live. And you were like, I will not say or 
I just like I will not or I don't haven't said R.I.P. because of his past. Yes. And in the same live, you also said something about um, Malcolm X. <laughs> and yes. um, I was just like, okay, I was also fine. very drunk, so I don't even know if I can remember everything that I was saying um, no, during but that live. That now I've gone on Twitter and I've listened to certain things and they talk about it, and this is where I want to tie it on to growth. Because if we weren't allowed to grow, you and I wouldn't be in this corporate. No, of course. You and I wouldn't, you wouldn't have, be able to have the platform that you have with the podcast. You wouldn't have your job because you would have stayed a promiscuous, broke hoe. Right. At 22. Wait, broke though? Chill, bro. You said you were broke at a certain point in time. You didn't have a bed. Yeah, I was 18. Right, that's what I'm Straight saying. Straight out the house, but bitch, when I started hoeing, a bitch wasn't broke anymore. Oh, okay, so it was <laughs> no. broke, then hoe. Yeah, I wasn't a broke hoe though. <laughs> you, I was broke, then hoed, but I was never a broke hoe, so calm okay. down. <laughs> calm down on that. Correction. <laughs> Correction. Fucking correct me on that one. She was broke. So what if you would have died before you got to the good home? You part? know, <laughs> goddamn, shit. Right. Had to correct that real quick. <laughs> um, so so this is this is my thing. Yes, people can change. Yes, people are going to grow. Right. The issues and, and why I spoke on this man in particular um, with his decisions is because these decisions were, are just from six months ago. He, no, it was in 2016. No, 2017, he just did something with parole. So he was on house arrest right now. People do say they're going to change when they're on house arrest. He, he, was, in, he was driving. December, he December, December of 2017. He did something. Oh my God, I could bring it up. No, well, he violated something. But even if we go back to okay, 2016, and that, when that's okay. So even if we go back to 2016 for the conversation purposes, the beating of his girl of his pregnant girlfriend. That yes, was in 2016. Yes, and okay. the beating of the gay man. Of the gay man in 2016. jail. 2016. Yes. Oh, he, this happened in jail. Yes. Oh my God! Can we go back to our conversation last night? Not now, but I wish I could go back now. I thought he beat him to the ground, like, walking. He's no. in jail. Right, again, for probably some bullshit. Right. So this is my thing, and, and, and this is this is where I want to, uh, this is kind of where I want to kind of draw the line. We can go back and say we made dumb decisions in our teens, in our early adulthood, in our early 20s, et etc. et cetera. Et cetera. Mm-hmm. Regardless of the fact there are things that we know are just we're not supposed to do. We can go back to being seven years that. old. We can go back to that age. Beating your pregnant girlfriend till she is blind in one eye and beating a gay man literally seconds to where his life is about to end and then you wipe yourself in the blood of who you just beat up. Mm-hmm. I don't care your age. Because, of course not. You right. So at, at, but we're not talking about the act of it. Now I'm saying it's been two years. For, to me, that's still very, very it's new. It's been two years, and he was at least trying to be more positive. Trying. Well, I would be too if I was on trial. That's. I don't care how it happens. So It, it doesn't matter who, how. Who's, it, who's to know if it was even genuine? Who are we to say it wasn't? We're, we're, Right, but so okay, so give him the benefit of the doubt of that course, he's changing. You, have to give you the can, of the doubt. but what I'm not going to do is sit here and make an excuse that oh well he's a changed man. And no, 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 no. See that no. Okay, I a think lot of people getting, are saying he's no, a changed man or changing. Forget growth. them people. Okay, us here. Yep, we're yep. saying we have to give people one the benefit of the doubt that they're going to change. Does that mean that we in our personal lives that we're going to stay in their life? No. But we have to be willing to allow them to grow. You know, allow crazy? them to change. And I'm gonna just say this because I see the hypocrisy in this. Uh-huh. Because sure, you can give XXX Tentacion this compassion of growth and this compassion of he can change. Mm-hmm. That compassion, and I'll bring in this is probably gonna be a little deeper, and it's a it's it's a stretch. But that compassion was not there for Dylan Roof. And we brought this up. For a lot of people. Dylan, Dylan, I, Dylan Roof was 20 years old. Mm-hmm. What he did was a race hate crime, mm-hmm. which could have been how, his environment, which is what we say even mm-hmm. with XXXTentacion. Correct. We don't know what type of environment uh, he, grew he grew up, up. and you use that with 
him beating the gay man. Mm-hmm. I'm aware of homophobia in the black community. And the and the racism right. in the white community. And we're right. But that compassion was not there for Dylan Roof with be, because of his age and, and the decision he made. We're talking about media wise. With because it, not, I, not even media wise. If we're talking with conversations amongst our friends, amongst our people, amongst when I think our about peers, it, I I see another child that we lost because mentally he's a kid. Yes. So it's damn. He could have been someone. We just lost society. Just lost another kid. To crime. Right. So I do have compassion for Dylan Roof because you he, are of the very minority because I've, right, when but, I've had this conversation and I've brought that up as an example, it was like, oh, no, but that's different. And so I, I, I don't want It is different. And, and, but at and, the same time, us as humans, should we should be more like, you know what? He can change. Do we want a sociopath without emotions to be back in society? Probably not to that level Mm -hmm. but he is able to change and he might not be out here in full society but i think that in 10 years whatever with therapy they can probably he can probably do good in the jail right he could still be a different person right we have to be willing to allow people to change but yes in society as a whole i don't think people have that view and i wish we would stop because we don't like being judged right why are we judging others decisions right right that man beat the girl up did what he did Beat the gay man up. He made that decision just like we have have made fucked up decisions. I and just, we want people to allow us to grow. We need course. to allow them to grow. Not we're not. we're I'm not saying XXX is going to be your friend or Dylan Roof is going to be out here being our friend. To me, it's just the conversation around it. Like, let's not put all of this um, fake emotions into all of these things. Because if you're going to – I'm really big with just keeping the same energy. Right. And so and to me, should. if you're having this compassion for – for XXX, mm-hmm. and then I didn't see you have the same, well, he was young, he could have grown, for for Dylan Roof, or for, uh, and I don't want to all lives matters this, because that's not what I'm doing, I'm specifically talking about his, his age, and the, yeah, and the crimes, but I just feel like we don't keep the same energy. We have people canceling Kanye, and still stepping in the name of love to R. Kelly. Like you know what I mean? Out. We have people who are, giving compassion to XXX Tentacion, but dragged and canceled the fuck out of Chris Brown for a long time because of what he did with Rihanna. But then we go back, even with domestic violence still, then we go to Fab. Fab never got canceled. Why? Because we didn't see Emily's battered face uh, in the media. Yes. And people but nowadays, we're so, we're visual. We have this much um, attention, attention span. span. We have to see it. So if you're getting your ass, and it happens to domestic violence, if you're getting your ass beat in private, and you're covering it up and making it, and we don't see it, we don't have as much compassion for you right. as the one that's coming through with a bloody nose, crying and like hanging, clinging onto life. And that's and, what I'm saying. And we got to keep the same energy, bro. And the bro. cousin posts a picture of them in the hospital. It's the same energy, but you have to. we have to understand that society, the way it is now, they have to see things. And right. it's not right. It you're really right. isn't. But that's you're where right. the conversation... We're becoming numb to it all. We're numb. And yeah. we shouldn't be. Yeah. We really shouldn't just... I believe it was Carla told me not too long ago. Oh, I don't know who it was. It was like, I didn't think there was this much violence. Or I didn't think there was, I never seen so many. Carla said, when I moved to New York, I saw people getting killed. Yeah. And she's like, now it's like everywhere. I didn't think it was like that. I said, it's been everywhere. And the same thing with racism and with the police. It's been going been on. Going on. The now problem we is now, we see it here. Yep. The second it happens, we're not waiting for Fox News and CN, uh, NBC to give us whatever report they decide to report it. Right. How to decide to report it. You're right. So we're becoming numb because there's so much of it now. And now people are like, it's worse now. No, it's not worse now. Niggas been out here killing each other for Uh, stupid uh, things. Like the kid that just got stabbed. Yes. I don't think we ever would have known about this. (sighs) Yeah, that was We would have never known about that kid getting stabbed yesterday if it wasn't for social media. Even back to XXX, I I, want to clear it up that I don't believe anyone deserves to die based on the decisions they make. But even with him, and I will also say, I was against and I felt like chills watching his lifeless body in the car. And what's crazy is that I watched it a few times and felt nothing. It's to me it's crazy. No, like, I felt nothing. You could like, look wow, and see but I can he's dead. watch it. Like growing up, I I used to cover my eyes in, in rated R movies. Like, like we only shit? yeah, but we only saw dead bodies in rated R movies. But now we could turn on our phone and literally see a real dead body. Like we, we um, well, it, I'm from Puerto Rico and for, it's oh, really okay, weird. No, and in Puerto Rico the news they show up to the, to the crime scene 
and literally record the lifeless body. Oh, no. And it bro. shows on the news, like, Five o'clock news. They're showing that I'm. I've been used to seeing that. Okay. And um. Also, I work. I, I have a thing with. I don't like death when it gets it hits close to me. It hasn't happened right. often, so I don't like dealing with that. But I like seeing tragic things in the trauma area. So I worked in the hospital for a while, and I lied and conned my way into getting a key card <laughs> to the trauma unit. Bro, I just need y'all to know that Carla is the most ratchet scammer of a woman. With this, and she's so beautiful, like you would never know. But this bitch is rash. I am. She's a scammer. I am. I wanted to see things like that, so there was a new she white girl. She scammed us into the club last I night. Did, girl, I want an Oscar for that. Gladys, whoever you are, thank you, girl. I don't know who you are, but you got me in a club. Um, so I, w- I would go into the trauma area just to see whenever I would get a call and the scheduling, like the the things coming in, like ETA two minutes. I would run and go in there and see them come in, and someone was like lifeless bodies, or they were like resuscitating them when you see them like tongues out like it was blood everywhere oh, i love to see that type of stuff so i think maybe i Ugh. I, I don't even I, like wiping my own period blood so i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i don't like blood like i have to see that shit every month and i be grossed out so i ain't trying to see no body i ain't trying to see no blood i cover my eyes during r-rated movies bitch. this is just not my life you are disgusting i'm sorry like and i'm, I'm like, about to get a period bleed? for the first time why in 14 i gotta bleed years? every month man that shit nasty man i haven't had that in 14 years and i'm getting it next month when i take my iud out and i don't die. know what i'm you probably do. gonna bleed like two weeks straight Oh my God, <laughs> screw you. I promise when my birth control wore off, bitch, I thought I was going to bleed for the rest of my life. Oh my I, God. I just bled for like two. Uh, this is really graphic and gross. This is yeah, very no. gross. This is what you, you'll learn, guys, if you're still in your 20s and you're dealing with birth control when you come off that shit. It it's some bullshit. And then you still can't get pregnant for a long time after, but that's birth control. That's because of the hormones. The IUD is different. It's like a little. It doesn't like have a, much hormones, but I don't get a period at all. It's a wishbone, right? Mm-hmm. That's in your it's little, little cervix or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. up there somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's I can't feel it. Okay. I, I have I have no control I'm right. over that. Um, quick question. Yes. Have you ever felt self-conscious recently about your age? Only we- when my friends call me a pedophile, man. Like, because God you damn, are. If they're 19 and 20, they're of age, bro. Like, of so, age so to now what? Of age. To they're what? They're over 18. <laughs> you're a fucking they're pedophile. legal see so this is so normally i don't feel self-conscious like but like i ain't gonna lie i was on seeking arrangement which is like a little sugar daddy site and i did just put my age down to like 23 because i feel <gasps> like they don't want me how am i gonna find a sugar daddy at 27 like they want a little young tenderoni man uh no 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 no. but i love where i'm at right now so outside of people judging me I love my age. I'm judging you. Yeah. So remember the two young kids that came to the bar? I said, oh, this is right up her alley. Don't right do here. that. See they were talking talk- juice. But this is what I'm talking about. Like, so um, even the the video of all of the NBA draft picks, I sent it to you. I was one of them. You were one of 13 people who was like, oh, Mandy, which, oh, here you go, girl, these yo tights. And you know, they none of them have facial hair. You know, they're they just. They can't grow that shit yet. They I haven't mean, had puberty. You know, men, so, hit, men hit puberty later, and I, I am very sure you have been with some boys chill, that probably chill, their voice ain't bro. even right yet. Don't do that. See, so this is just because they're tall doesn't mean they hit puberty. <laughs> they got grown man bodies, man. I like to, no, they that don't. That sound like a pedophile thing to say. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, That's what them teachers no, be saying when they fuck no, the middle school I kids. Know, okay. No, no, no. Don't but you ever be a teacher? It, so, oh, I wouldn't because I know that. No, don't go. Teach it would have horrible to, decisions. No, it would have to be. It would have to be elementary because I couldn't do a high school. No, no, I wouldn't even put no, you in elementary school. These no. little fifth graders Shut nowadays, no, they be tall. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. No, but no. So I am very secure about my age. Like I love because I see myself growing as I'm aging. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. And I mean, I'm still not 30 yet, so <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm almost there though, Jesus. Um, but to me, yeah, my age is only like becoming brought to attention because I like young guys. So when and you were so, 23 dating a 19 year, it wasn't that bad. Now you're 27 when I date a 19 year. Right, and in my mind, weird. I still feel like I'm like, and then that's the thing too, because I went back to college, we could share our college stories together. So <laughs> even though, even though I'm 27 and you're 19, yeah, I I, I had my class today too, like. So I felt like I was, <laughs> all right, let's not talk about it. What? They be in high school, girl. I mean. You know, if their birthday's out of September, they, they can be 19 and high, no, 18. Chill, bro, just, chill. No, no high schoolers, but yeah, I definitely I talk to, to younger guys in college. Um, But that's also just because um, what, what I'm looking for right now, 
You don't. Do you know what you're looking for? I feel like I know what I want, but being coming from the lifestyle that I was in, it's affecting me now to what I want in a partner because I have traveled the world. I have stayed in the best hotels, ate the best food, been able to ask for whatever I is, want. This is all material things. Very, very, and I'm shallow. So I, even though I'm 27, <laughs> my nigga, I still want you to have a six pack. I can't, and when you in your 30s, things drop, things change. Wait a minute. 30s, 40s. I'm, you can like, have a six pack at 30. You can. You can. It doesn't you look can the have same. A six, it yes, doesn't it look does. the same. No. Absolutely. You know, well, it, it looks exactly the same. Even, first of all, it can look even better. For you. The only problem is we need to work harder right, at it. Right. Um. I just, yeah. And, and I'm not going to lie. When I talk to the younger guys and the issues that my friends think I have with them, I listen to my friends complain about these older guys that they talk to, and they're going through the same shit. No. Yes. No. Yes, yes, yes. Unless We started the show saying some people don't grow up. Right. So maybe your friends are dating Possibly. An older in age Possibly. with a young mentality. Well, that's another thing, too. I know up. what I don't want right now, and what I don't want right now is kids. And so with speaking to older men, however. There are plenty of older no. men that don't want kids. <sighs> They're out not, there. Not no, 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 many. no. Right? There's, so there's not as many. Not only that, if they're older and say they don't want kids, sometimes it's because they already have some. So it's me dealing with the baggage. Or a lot of times I'll meet an older guy, and if they don't have kids, they're seeing they want them. And so but I don't want to waste. So you can, you yeah, can I don't want to waste anyone's time. That's like, true. And that's the thing. I don't want – I wouldn't want my time wasted, and I actually – was very close to being in a relationship with a guy. This was before I left over overseas for a couple months. And we had that talk. And he wanted another baby. He, he has one child now. And when we were talking, dating, and pretty, you know, he was like, I want another kid like yesterday. Oh, no. And so having that conversation with him, You're I put like a whole that. halt on my emotions. Because I was like, what I'm not going to do is waste your time because – there's no and that's way good that you're aware of that some people, I, are, some people don't I have don't, that awareness about themselves. But and I they think do that as are. as we grow older, these are things that we need to be aware of ourselves and they need to be communicated. Oh, absolutely. They need to be communicated. People play communicated. games all day long. And people could sit here and say, oh, well, you're young, you're young. They were telling me that at 18 when I said I ain't want kids. They were telling me that at 22 when I said I ain't want kids. And here I am just shy of 28. And that's still my mentality. So and that's, that's something that could change when I get older. Mean you but you have to keep dating 19 year olds. I All think right. that's an excuse. I mean, because I figure it sounds good. When, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Because when you're at 23 or 19, you would think now you're 24, you go for 20, 25. Now that can be 21. You know, they grow with you. No, you grow and then you keep them young. Yeah, because in my mind, I'm 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 24 still. So you know that's like my seeking arrangement profile. <laughs> Bitch, I'm still, I, I'm childish as fuck. Does that work? What? You know what? I don't even, I don't even want to do. Uh, I'm not even doing shit talk because this is really interesting and I want to know <laughs> how how much more. How, what time am I on? Uh, okay, we can talk with you about this for like five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Dude, does this chicken arrangement work? <laughs> Not anymore. Oh. It used to. Um, I think there's so many men on there now um, who want relationships. And oh. so they're using all these platforms of dating sites to have relationships. And then it's more so on some, I don't want professionals. But it's like it's seeking arrangement. My nigga, this is an arrangement. Whatever we're about to do. Um, I don't want to be your mistress or your girlfriend aside from your wife for yeah. f for the hell of it. Like, no. like So I don't think that people understand the basis so of the site anymore. So how do you find anymore. a sugar daddy? Girl, now. I looked up. I ain't even going to hold you. All the, all the sugar daddies that I've had in my lifetime who have been wonderful to me. Um, shit, one I met when I was a bartender at Applebee's. The fuck? He... And I literally only got his number. His tab came up to $40. He left me a $40 tip. So I was like, oh, well, hello. You should come again. Um, <laughs> and, and so I got his card. And from there, like, he took me out. And he would take me and all my friends out. Then it started turning into. How old into, was he? Or how old did he seem? No, he was in his 30s, mid-30s. Oh, I, girl, I don't. <laughs> I, I'm real about this age. All of my sugar daddies, none of them. I think the oldest was 37. What? I got one that's 31, and the other one is like, yeah. Like oh, I when I think of a sugar daddy, I think of a late no. 50s white man with all nope. white hair. Nope. Nope. Oh. All black men. They're all black? All black. 
Well, I thought one I've of, only. Well, I, there's an African one, right? Oh, well, African oh, black. black. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, when I think of Africans, I think of sugar daddy. They're all black. They're all over six feet. They're all like handsome guys. What? They're they're married. Oh. So, but yeah, and so they, they have just money. Give you money. Well, and because of the relationship I have with them, it's not based on sex, and we've grown friendships. So there's never it, it's never transactional, like. They got my wire transfer, my cash app, my Venmo. If I need it, I call. None of them are local either. They all live in other cities. So I don't. It's hey. just, it, it works. So what what would be your advice for um women that maybe rent, maybe they just had a breakup and they're like, you know what? I'm going to spend the next year just dating, but I might want to try a sugar daddy. How do they find them? Um, I mean, there's different ways to find them. I would say if you have some hoe friends, ask Ask them to put you on. Um, <laughs> ha ha. Because, listen, your whole friends always got some some niggas that maybe they can't talk to because they don't fuck the homeboy or whatever like that. But they got money. You know, ask your whole friends. I would definitely say that because I did meet my African through a friend. She she posted um, she posted me and he had seen me on her page. And he was like. Ask your friends to post you. Yes. Ladies. He was like, I would love to meet her and get her contact. Within our first conversation, he's like, I want you to know how serious I am. He wired me $1,000 before I had even talked to him for Any more than Any men out there? Do you want my, um, <laughs> no. I have a conversation about how serious you are? Yeah, no. I'm willing, I want you to tell me how serious you are. No, but that's what I'm saying. So, um, and then I also, I think it's important to know that when you think of a sugar daddy, it doesn't have to be a 70 year old man on his deathbed. Like, I feel that would be so What much the better. fuck? No. I'm sorry. I'm, like I said, I'm shallow. I can't put on the front the girlfriend experience with a nigga I'm not attracted to. I like black dick. I like black guys. And I like them tall. They're all over six foot. They're all good looking men. If I, I'll show you the pictures when we leave here, but they've, easy, bro. I think Cake I would wall. Rather... And then I don't need people judging me like I'm out with a sugar daddy when I'm out. Can we be out in public without motherfuckers thinking oh, and you paying me someone... for sex? It's so obvious. Bro, it's obvious. So I don't, obvious. I don't want it to be obvious. I like to be a I secret hoe. Anna, I want an Anna Nicole Smith um, arrangement. No, bro. He No. He's going to die and leave me all his money. Yeah, no. I will. You... You're going to suck that 70... 70- Let's 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 raise it. He was he like died eight. like eighty something. You gonna suck eighty seven year old dick? Yes. Yeah. He's going to marry me and enjoy it. No, I'm what? enjoying the money. Oh, and, but I'm talking at her level. How rich he was, married with. I don't think they had a prenup, prenup right? I don't know, but there was no okay. way I could do so that. So married, no way, I no could prenup. That. I know he's about to die. You know he probably comes with two licks. No I'm way I could it. do that, bro. No way. You lying. No, you I'm lying not. sack of shit. This nigga's about to die in six months. You need to suck that dick for six months so you can become a millionaire? Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, bro. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> I usually do an episode of unsolicited advice, but because this morning we need to get on the train because I'm a New Yorker now. I left. I couldn't find my laptop in the mess that I left in Crystal's room. Crystal, I'm going to clean your room. <laughs> um, can't, do, you said you had one that, that we can give advice to, and it's unsolicited because they didn't fucking ask me. Um, my unsolicited advice to y'all motherfuckers out here would be to really just stop being motherfucking hypocrites. Stop being hypocrites. Keep the same energy. I'm so sick of people stancing for one thing and then the next thing you know, what they said is a contradiction to what the fuck they just said. Nobody has I, their own thoughts anymore. They go off No, of I think they up. go off of what what is the thing to the do? The new trend, the new hashtag. The 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 the, the thing even and, and to me more so than ever with this Kanye shit I'm not going to listen to Kanye, but now I'm also not going to listen to Pusha T. But, girl, did you ever listen to Pusha T? Because if you didn't, then it's just like now you're just making it a thing because it's a thing on social media. Right. So I just think that people need to hone in on their own individual thoughts, um, allow people to disagree, yes. allow people to have other opinions. And just because someone's opinion doesn't align with yours doesn't make yours any more right than theirs. You Everyone agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Leave it at that. I think everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But when you're forcing and pushing your opinion on someone else yeah. or your opinions are based on the majority and what you're seeing and you're not creating your own sense of thought, like, bitch, get yourself together. I have think your, that have your own thoughts I think a lot opinions. of us need to just maybe read more books instead of reading more timelines. 
Yeah, like I listen. I told you, my best friend in my head is Charlemagne. And sometimes I yes. hear him say that he won't get on social media, like no. on, his, on his ride to work or put the radio on. That way, he can process certain things on his own on and what his, his thoughts own. are. And I, I like to do that as well because if I sit here on social media, if I would have went by the whole plot, um, uh, plies, just me. <laughs> I use me. Um, what, Pusha T? And yes. Kanye? I have never listened to Pusha T's music. Right. So well, it, it wasn't Pusha T. I, 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 Drake. So I wasn't that. People had the thing. And I, I was literally researching what each line meant. What are you dissing about? I, because right. I don't know the past. Right. I didn't know who, who sold drugs and who didn't sell drugs. And I didn't know any of that. So I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you. I would still fuck Drake. So Drake won to me, in my eyes. I like light skinned niggas. So Drake for Drake the win. Drake never going to lose. No, Drake, he's just not. He's just too I fucking cool. And I'm in the era where, bitch, I watched Degrassi. So I, I have mean, a feeling that if somebody comes out saying that Drake is a DL nigga, People will be like, okay, now it's okay to be uh, bisexual. Right. <laughs> he would make Drake bisexuality no, great. Drake can do no wrong. But None. that's what I'm saying. I just feel like, uh, uh, again, also read the news before you read captions. Read, yes. like, look into things in your own eyes, through your own common sense, from your, you know, evaluate it based on your own experiences first. And then speak. Yeah. <laughs> and then form an opinion. That would be just my form fucking unsolicited opinion, advice. Then... Get your motherfucking shit together and stop being hypocrites. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't be hypocrites. And that is the fucking show. Thank you so much for having me Thank on. I, Where can they find you? This was a pleasure. Everybody. You guys can find me on social media at Full Court Pumps. You guys can also tune into my podcast yes! if you haven't yet. Horrible Decisions. And that is spelled whore, W-H-O-R-E. Type that in. We'll pop right up. Um, I'm both like, hey, hey, just type in whore. Hey, you know, we pop right up. Um, but yeah, please tune in, listen to us. We drop every Monday our episodes weekly, um, and we have a, a pretty decent archive of things if you guys are looking There's for a new a show. Lot to, to listen a to. whole lot to listen to. So check that out. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for bringing me on to talk about my growth. Yes. As I'm almost and, 30. And you're going to keep growing. And you guys, make sure to rate and subscribe. We're on everywhere iTunes, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. Everywhere. I tag it everywhere. So you guys will figure it out. Yes. And there's thank video you. coming soon. Whoa, whoa. You guys can whoa. see me now. <laughs> um, thank you. Bye. Bye.